Well, it works. Tubeless is fantastic. It's your best friend. It's got your back. It's looking out for you. But when it decides to no longer be your best friend, it's a nightmare. So in this video, I'm going to look at the five most common problems you get with tubeless, and more importantly, how you sort them out. When it comes down to mountain bikes, I think tubeless is great, and it works pretty well on gravel too. But road bikes, mm, I think the jury's still out. Yes, you do get less of your typical common punctures, but super hard increased tire pressures, delicate narrow tires with fragile sidewalls does mean that you start to get the sort of problems that you wouldn't necessarily get with chunky tubeless or even, dare I say it, inner tubes. And the biggest problem is the tire that just refuses to stay inflated. The rear to this one performs perfectly well, stays inflated for weeks if not months, and this one used to perform in exactly the same way. But now, all of a sudden, it just refuses to hold air. It's not had a, an impact, it's not had a puncture, nothing's happened to it, it just keeps going down. Sound familiar? Now before we look at the problems, let's first of all look at what you think may be a problem, but in fact it's, it's just tubeless. Now when you run tubes, you return to your bike a week later and the tyre pressure is in exactly the same place as when you left it. You switch to tubeless, and you lose 10 psi every time you go back to your bike. This is just normal. Sometimes tubeless just does that. Now I'm also going to assume the obvious and you've done the basic checks and you've not got something like that stuck in the side of your tire. One of the most important things you need to consider is your sealant. Now there are many brands out there and to be honest with you, the vast majority of them do a fantastic job. There are, however, a few brands that I lean towards. Now if it's stuff like gravel or a tire that's gonna take some kind of abuse, then I tend to lean towards either the PT or the muck off stuff because it does a great job in that kind of environment. However, if you are doing something like a delicate road tire like this one, then I tend to go for Joe's No Flats. Two reasons, one, this is a nice latex based product. Can you hear that rain? But also it's the same color as these rather nice cotton, very expensive skin wall tires. And what you can find is if you use that stuff like that's purple or something like that, with these thin skin walls, it can weep through and ruin your pretty tires. As I say, there are loads of brands out there and the vast majority of them do a fantastic job. But what's your experience? What one do you use and what have you had the best results with? And also, did you know that your tyre sealant has a best before date? So, have you checked to see if that's your problem? Hopefully the rain hitting the roof isn't causing too much of a problem with the audio. This is the problem with having a workshop with a metal roof in the northwest of England in the winter. But hey, uh, let's crack on. Most tubeless issues are caused by lost or dried up sealant. So we'll tick that one off first. Now your sealant is water-based, so will eventually dry out. I recommend checking it every two to three months depending on the weather conditions where you live. Guidelines are offered by the wheel, tire, and sealant manufacturers as to how much sealant you should use. Can you use too much sealant? Yes, you can. Can you use more than they recommend? Yes, you can, and I regularly do. I recommend using a bit of common sense on that one. To see how much sealant is in your tyres, you first of all need to have see-through tyres. Just kidding, no you don't. The cleanest and easiest way to determine how much sealant is in your tyre is to go in through the valve. To check your sealant level, you need to get the wheel and tyre off the ground. Now you can do that, if you have a maintenance stand, you can do it with that. If not, you can use a bike stand like I've used on the bench here. I don't know, a coat hanger and hook it on the side of your wardrobe. Whatever you need to do, do it and get that wheel and tire off the ground and get the valve at the lowest position there at six o'clock. So the first job you need to do is take that valve core out. Now the vast majority of tubeless valves nowadays, they come with the valve core remover built into the dust cap, or you can find them with pumps. Worst case scenario, you could use a small adjustable spanner or even dare I say it, a pair of pliers, but you need to get yourself the right tool for the job. So you just use that to start that off. You can finish it off by hand to be honest, so you spin that out. And then what we're going to do is we are going to dip the sealant in the tire in a similar way that you would check the oil on your car. Now you could do that with a very small thin cable tire like that. You could use it with the hose that comes with something like a can of WD-40 or you can even 
use the right tool for the job, which is one of those. So let's dip that. Now what you want to take into consideration, there's going to be residual sealant in the valve body. So when you dip it, all the way to the bottom, draw it out and then just wipe it because you're going to have picked up the residual sealant that's in the valve body. So just ignore the first dip and then dip again. All the way to the bottom, hold it for a second, lift it up, do this a few times until you get a good average. And as you can see from my one, I've got more than enough sealant in there, but let's demonstrate how you do it anyway. The best way to get the sealant into your wheel is to use one of these, a sealant injector. It's quick, and it's clean and it means you can get the sealant in the wheel without breaking the seal. Top it up with the desired amount, inject it into the tyre, put the valve core back in again, reinflate the tyre and then go for a quick spin. It's always better to ride the bike after doing the sealant rather than just spinning the wheel on the stand because riding the bike your movement and your weight will do a much better job of bedding that bead in. An important thing to remember if you are running a hookless rim, do not exceed 72 psi or five bar of pressure. Forget what the tire says on the side. If it's a hookless rim, do not exceed 72 psi or five bar of pressure. The next thing we're going to look at are your valves. Now sealant gets everywhere and blocks absolutely everything up, but let's face it, that's what it's designed to do. The trouble is, that plays havoc with your valves. And the regular topping up of the air means that the valves are also seeing a lot more traffic. So what happens is those delicate little rubber seals inside the valve cores get bunged up with sealant and then, yeah, you've guessed it, they leak. Right, so let's first of all get some air in that tire, which means I get to use one of my favorite tools, which I very rarely feature on my channel. And one of the reasons it doesn't feature very often on the channel is because the sudden shot of air can cause the microphone to cut out. So if that does start happening, I apologize beforehand. Right, so let's get this blown up. Interesting, did you hear that valve struggle to let air through? Hmm, that valve is sticky. Right, let's test it. So the quickest and easiest way to test the valve is with some soapy water and a brush and you literally do what you think you do get it and just dab it on the top of the valve and look at that hey presto air bubbles air bubbles means air this problem is simple to sort out and you don't need to remove the valve from the wheel to do it first of all remove the valve core dip it in your soapy water and give it a good clean pay close attention to those two rubber seals at the end if however you think it's a bit past it and a bit knackered don't worry they're a generic size and fit you can buy a pack of 10 of these things online for a two or three pounds and you also need to clean the valve body and there's a simple little hack to doing that too so you know these metal straws that everyone's using now because nobody wants to use plastic straws but they do a special brush for cleaning those metal straws and you can buy those brushes in sets online for about two pound i'll put a link in the description below here is one of those brushes oh and look it's absolutely perfect for cleaning out valve bodies so use that pop it in there give it a clean out and you're done. Also, while you're giving your valves a bit of TLC, check the valve locking nut. Make sure it's done up all the way and giving you a decent seal between the valve and the rim. If it's not done up all the way, then this will happen. Another common problem is bead leak. This is where sealant leaks out of the bead between the rim and the tire. It's usually caused when the tire at some point has been ridden at low pressure, ca causing a strain on the bead and sealant literally burps out. The problem is, if left, dried sealant will build up around the leak, making the problem even worse. You can identify bead leak either visually by literally <laughs> sealant leaking out or by adding a little bit of soapy water. The best way to deal with a bead leak is to break the bead and clean the old sealant away from the affected area. Now you could use something like a sealant removal spray. The problem with that stuff is it will end up going inside the tyre and will contaminate the sealant that's already in there, which would be bad. This is a block of natural rubber crepe. It's latex based and you can use this to remove stubborn dried on adhesive. Once you're done, top up your sealant, inflate your tyre and take it for a quick spin. Sidewall leak is where the sealant quite literally 
bleeds through the sides of the sidewall. You only tend to find it happen with tyres like this that are very delicate with very thin sidewalls. And you identify it either visually by literally seeing it weep through the sidewalls or with your old friend, soapy water. Air seeping out of the sidewall is quite common when you first set tubeless up, but the problem will soon go away. If the problem persists, that would suggest a compatibility problem with the sealant you're using, or literally, a lack of it. First job to do, check your sealant. If your sealant is low, do the obvious thing, top it up. However, you need to give the sealant a bit of time to soak back into the sidewall. So this fix will take a little bit of time before you see the benefit. But if the problem persists, then that would suggest there is a compatibility issue between the tire you're using and the sealant. So you need to try a different one. Last on my list, rim tape. Now I've purposely left this one to the end because in my personal opinion, it's the one that's least likely to happen and you'd probably want to rule the other ones out before you start looking at a more complicated job like this. Now the vast majority of wheels that are out there have their spokes installed going through the rim like so, which obviously means there's lots of holes all the way around the rim. And they overcome this problem with stuff called rim tape. And the rim tape is applied all the way around the rim to cover up those holes. Now in the tubeless world, if your tubeless rim tape fails, your tubeless system fails. Now this is another job where we call on our old friend, Mr. Bubbles. What you need to do is you need to apply some soapy water to the nipples, which are the bottom part of the spoke where they go into the wheel. If you see bubbles, that would suggest you either have a problem with your valve and it's not seated correctly, or you've got a problem with your rim tape. Now, if you are confident that your valve is okay, then you may want to consider replacing that rim tape. Now, the reason we do this job last and we rule out all the other stuff first is because to remove the rim tape, we've got to take the whole tire off. And this is a tubeless tire that is filled with sealant. And when we take it off, we are gonna find it is gunked up with absolutely tons of sealant that we're going to have to clean off before we can put the tire back on again. And it is a horrible job that is gonna take forever. Now this video is gonna drag on long enough as it is, so I'm not gonna show you that process in this video. I'm going to be making a separate video about it soon, but I, just to give you a hint, yes, it involves crepe and a lot of elbow grease. Right, so let's crack on. Rim tape comes in all different widths. You will need to check with your wheel manufacturer as to what size tape you need. Now the problem with rim tape is it is stupidly expensive. The average roll costs roughly 20 pounds. Saying that though, that DT Swiss stuff, I think I saw that the other day for 28 pounds. And this, these rolls will do roughly a set of wheels. Now, no bike mechanic will use this stuff. You might see bike shops selling this stuff, but they don't use it. What they use is Tessa tape. Now, Tessa tape also costs roughly 20 pounds, link in the description below. But that will do, that's 220 foot, and that will do roughly 30 sets of wheels. So this is the wheel I'm going to be doing. It's a carbon fiber hunt with a Villafex Corsa race tire on it. Now I need to remove the tire, the valve and the rim tape. It's really easy. It's obvious what you do. I'm not going to be doing this on camera in the workshop because it'll make a mess. So I'm going to go and take this outside and I'll see you in a second. 12 seconds later. There you go. Back. That wasn't too bad, was it? There's the wheel. Nice done. No tire on it anymore. But what I want to show you is this. This is the tire I have taken off. And if you look at it, I'm not sure if the camera will pick up on this, but it looks like a tub, doesn't it? Look at there, the join all the way along. What's happened is the air has come out of it and the tire has just stuck itself together. Now, if you think you're getting that back on the bike, look, it's, it's glued itself together there, look, it's caved in and glued. If you would think you're getting that back on the wheel and then just pumping it back up, you think that is gonna separate and just find a bead, you've got absolutely no hope. So you're gonna to have to sit there, peel all this out and get all of that glue out of there and try and separate it all. You just pff, forget that. So to make this job a bit easier for both you and me, I'm gonna cheat. 
Right, so that's my rim tape taken off, and there you go, there's those holes I was telling you about where the spokes go through. Now the problem that I've now got is I've got little bits of sealant all around the edge of the rim that I need to get off. Now you can yet get a cloth and give it a good rub, and a lot of it will come off with a cloth, and it will catch it and lift it off but you will still end up with little bits re remaining and you need to get this surface perfectly clean for the new tape. So to do that, you will need a clean cloth and some isopropyl alcohol. Let's get rubbing. Once you're confident that using your isopropyl alcohol and your crepe, you've got every last little bit of glue out of your rim, you can then start looking at putting your tape on. Now Park make a tool that goes on the front of the workbench. It goes about there and it's designed to hold a wheel on the front of your workbench so you can do stuff like this. But I'm not going to pay £130 for a tool that I will use infrequently but will get in my way frequently. So. What I'm going to do instead is put what I know to be a clean cloth on my workshop stool and I'm just going to do it that way. You just need to make sure it's somewhere clean because you don't want your nice clean tape to be stuck onto a dirty surface. So now you've got your clean surface, find your valve hole, get your valve hole, put it at the bottom because we're going to start opposite the valve and we get our tape and we start with our tape. And the obvious thing to do is just to keep it straight and tight. And off we go. And what we want to do is two full rotations, rotations of the wheel. Just make sure it goes nice and perfectly in the middle. You don't want it going up where the bead is and just do, as I say, two full rotations. Once you've done your two full rotations, just get your cloth and use your cloth to help push the tape down and bed it into the rim. And there we go. Next job is to make a small hole for your valve. Use that using a sharp knife or a pick and then basically what you're doing just making a hole through the tape like so without stabbing yourself in the finger. There you go. Now because I put new tape on I like to put a new valve in as well. The valve I've gone for is the one provided by Hunt because I just happen to have a few in. I don't really have a preference on valves. I've never found a good one or a bad one. If you've got a valve you prefer, stick a comment below. And there we go, we're now ready for a tyre. My tyre of choice for the summer bike at the moment, the Vittoria Rubino in the 28 with a cheeky bit of skin wall. A nice spring training tyre. A bit more comfort, not as quick, but a little bit more grip for those slimy roads. And it is good practice when fitting a tyre to fit the logo of the tyre in line with the logo of the wheel. Because if, for example, you get a nasty impact into the tyre, if you were to take the tyre off, you can, because you know where the tyre was, you can then work out in relation to the wheel where the impact was so you can check your wheel and if you're running inner tubes it helps you find on the inner tube where the puncture was. That was the hardest tyre I've ever had to fit. I've been off camera half an hour. That's the first time I've resorted into using tyre levers to get a tyre on and I can't remember how long of which one I snapped. <sighs> I won't be rushing back to buy another pair of those. <sighs> right, now I've had a chance to recover. Put my sweatshirt back on again. Let's put some air in it.
strange, no bead pop. Very strange, fair enough. Just need a bit of sealant put in it. It's a skin wall. So I'm gonna go with a bit of Joe's. I'll chuck 20 mil in for now. Should be enough just to plug the holes. Want roughly 50 or 60 psi in there for now. Forty-six. Not bad, is it? Put a bit more in there. Get yourself one of those gadgets. They're great. Link below. Not very expensive either. There you go, it eventually saw my way of thinking. I am not looking forward to doing the back one, I can tell you that. So there you go, five typical tubeless problems and how to overcome them. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, then do me a huge favor and hit that like button down there. Now, if bike maintenance is your thing, then why not check out that video up there where I show you how to stop your disc brake squealing, which is a big problem this time of year. Or if you fancy something a little bit different, then why not check out that video down there where I show you how to change the bearings in your free hub and save you about 28 pound in the process. Thanks for watching.